Okay, there we go. Um, so I'm delighted to be here to present today, um, and it's good to have uh, students from Grosvenor Grammar School and your, your teacher there to, in the audience. Um, I'm a former pupil of Grosvenor, and as I found out about an hour ago or less, your teacher is uh, someone who used to work with me as a placement student in the Department of Education. So, sort of a small world, and I'm delighted to be able to, to present to you guys, and hopefully you find it interesting. Today what we'll talk about is the competitiveness scorecard that we built for Northern Ireland. It's the first time this scorecard's been, been done in this way. Um, it's based on the national competitiveness framework for the Republic of Ireland. So we basically repeated that methodology. But one of the quotes about competitiveness is that competitiveness is the economics, but physics is the gravity. Or gravity is the physics, so we'll get that the right way around. Um, but that shows you how important it is. So we'll look a bit about how, how the scorecard is constructed, what the key findings of the research were, and what the, the key pillars sort of found. So things like macro and economic uh, sustainability, about taxes, about the business environment, about quality of life, and all those things that feed in, and then the policy conversations. So what is competitiveness? As you can see, it's a set of institutions, policies, and factors that determine the level of productivity for many country. So it's very, very important. Productivity is what determines your overall level of income, which determines your level of wealth. So if you want to have a wealthier society, you need to invest in productivity, you need to invest in competitiveness. That's where one of your main drivers of wealth. And as Paul Krugman said, productivity isn't everything, but in the long run, it's almost everything. So really, productivity is about how much you can produce, how much your workers produce, and how much wages and profits they can produce per hour. And a country's ability to improve its standard of living over time depends almost entirely on its ability to increase the level of output per worker. So when you invest in technology, when you invest in knowledge, you guys, when you go into the workforce, will produce more than people did a decade ago and a decade before that. And that's how you drive up your standards of living. This is a chart, GDP per, per capita. So that's one of the most important economic indicators that you'll see. And that's basically the, the level of wages plus profits per person in society. And as you can see from where Northern Ireland is, located in the bottom right, it's actually quite a bit lower in Northern Ireland um, than a number of the other comparator countries. So the likes of Switzerland, Sweden and Denmark are relatively very rich compared to Northern Ireland. Um, and also Ireland and the UK are, are significantly above. The Irish figures, actually because of corporation tax, are interesting because when you look at gross national product, um, on the sort of right close to the UK, that's with the foreign firms' profits removed, it's actually much closer to the UK and Northern Irish level. So the impact of corporation tax is quite large, you can see it in the national accounts for the Republic of Ireland. So in assessing competitiveness, it was the Economic Advisory Group that commissioned us within the centre to carry out the research, and our task was to follow the, the methodology carried out by the NCC in the Republic of Ireland. And really what the scorecard did was it pointed the economic advisory group into areas where they could focus on further research. So things like productivity, economic inactivity, and other drivers that they wanted to look at for the future. And this is the scorecard itself. This is how it was structured. So if we look at the bottom layer, those are the policy inputs. So those are the things that policy can impact upon at this point in time. So the business environment, the physical infrastructure, education and skills, innovation and research and development. At the next level up, what we have are sort of the outputs of current competitiveness programs, so business performance, productivity, prices and costs, and labour supply. What we also added that the NCC didn't include was a sectoral perspective to see if it was really what we did in Northern Ireland or how we, how we did it within those sectors. And then at the top level of the pyramid, macro and fiscal sustainability, quality of life and environmental sustainability. We added quite a bit in about quality of life because all of the academic literature that is emerging at this point in time points to well-being, quality of life, how happy people are, that they're less anxious. And those things are actually as important as, as your income in terms of how happy and wealthy you are in terms of society. So in terms of the key findings, and before we get into the key findings, I think it's important to show you how we interpret the data. Um, the challenge here is to standardize and interpret a lot of data. Each indicator has a number of different countries. So sometimes we'll have 13 countries in the basket, sometimes 28, sometimes 33 and we had to try and standardise it, and that's why we've used deciles. So if you look at the spider diagrams, one is the best and 10 is the worst, and if you're close to the centre of the spider diagram, that's a relatively strong performance. 
So if we look at this diagram, um, it shows that the business environment is the strongest pillar of the, of the research. And overall, if we look at competitiveness across all of the 12 pillars, it really hasn't moved over the last five years. So about 60% of the way down the list, about the sixth decile. So um, very, very stable, but further down the list than you want to be. Business environment and quality of life are both very strong. Um, and the business environment, as you'll see later when Laura talks through some of the more detailed pillars, um, that's a lot to do with the UK regulatory framework. We do benefit from a lot of the UK policies that are put in place for the whole of the, the economy. Um, in terms of quality of life, strangely enough, even though we have relatively lower incomes um, and relatively higher unemployment and things like that in the economic indicators, it's a relatively happy society, so people are less anxious, people are more happy. And if you look into the detail behind that research, some of it suggests that perhaps we're less stressed because there's not as many people in work and work long hours and all that sort of stuff, but also because it's a post-trouble society, so it's relatively better now than it was in the past. So some of those things are quite interesting when they come through in the data. Physical infrastructure and education and skills are things that we score well on. And then when we go further down to the left-hand side, um, we're very weak in productivity. That's the weakest pillar of the index, so that's quite a worry in terms of economic policy. We need to boost our productivity in terms of um, overall wealth for the future. And that's just a different way of presenting the same data. So in terms of the pillars, um, again, we've presented these in spider diagrams. So macroeconomic and fiscal sustainability has improved a bit from 7.6 out of 10 to 7.2. So we have a slight improvement there. And if you look at the indicators, the likes of tax revenue, national credit ratings, central government income tax rates, VAT and tax revenue, those are quite strong. Um, and again, the point that I made earlier, Tax revenues, your national credit rating, those are UK government um, statistics, but they're important for Northern Ireland because your national credit rating determines the rate at which government can borrow money across the UK. If we look down at the left-hand side, government expenditure is a por portion of GVA or GDP. We have a relatively large public sector, um, and therefore we would like to grow the private sector and, and have a more um, balanced economy. And if you look at the direction of change here, we have, firstly, the column out is where you're ranked, so red, amber, and green, obviously, in terms of how good, bad, or indifferent your performance is, and in terms of the direction of change, and then the change in decile. So actually, if you look at things like central government corporate income tax rate, 9 out of 35, so the rank's been improving, the direction of change is positive, and then we've skipped ahead of other countries in the index. And actually, where we are in an international context, um, if you look at the right-hand column, is one of the most important factors. So have we moved ahead or have we moved, gone behind any of our international comparator countries? If we look at quality of life, this is the second strongest pillar, and in fact, it's really very strong. So as I said, happy and satisfied despite low incomes and relatively low levels of civic engagement. Um, and as I said, why? So is it just about the normalisation of society and do we have lower expectations? The other thing in there, Northern Ireland is quite strong family and community linkages. So within society, um, if you sort of live in a sort of more rural background or whatever, it, you can actually have a, a better quality of life because you have strong family bonds, you have a good community built around, and that all influences well-being. If we look at happiness, so we're very happy. We have good levels of life satisfaction, low anxiety, um, and we score very well. Things like income inequality, Gini coefficients, we score reasonably well there. And the, a Gini coefficient measures the spread of the, from the lowest incomes to the very highest incomes. And Northern Ireland does relatively well in that index. The reason why Northern Ireland does well in that index is because you don't have as many very, very high earners as you would see in other UK regions. On the other side of this uh, wheel, we have things like life expectancy, voter turnout, so your civic engagement, and disposable income, which are relatively very low. So we're ranked 10th and 9th out of the deciles in terms of the other countries that we've, we've looked at. In terms of environmental sustainability, this is another area that we score quite well in. So things like air quality, we do very well in. You're not exposed to a huge amount of pollutants in the, in the environment. We have good levels, quite low um, amounts of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, but we're not fantastic in terms of waste generated. So the likes of the Germans can recycle almost all of the waste that they generate. We are much further down the, the pile in that regard. Oil dependency and energy from renewable sources, even though we have boosted our investment in renewable energy and the FE have done a fantastic job in that over the last decade, we're still quite far down, down the list in that regard. 
oil dependency is a concern because when you've got an exchange rate movement like we've had recently, obviously oil is relatively more expensive and you'll see that your diesel prices go up, heating oil prices go up, um, and that all feeds through then the final consumption and makes Northern Ireland less competitive. And at this point, I'm going to hand over to Laura for some of the more detailed conversations on some of the other pillars, so the next eight pillars, and then I'll, I'll come back and we'll talk about some of the policy conversations. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm, go, I'm a co-author of the Competitiveness Scorecard. I'm going to be running through the remaining eight pillars of the scorecard, and after that, I'll be passing you back to Richard for some of the policy conversation. Business performance. It is a key pillar of the Competitiveness Scorecard because it directly impacts upon the profits that a business can make both foreign and indigenous companies when considering where to locate, the look at the performance of businesses. It's the most improved element of the scorecard over the previous five years. And one of the main reasons why we perform so well is actually at the level of FDI job creation. One of the positive things here is that it's not only FDI job creation as why we perform so well over the previous five years, but there's also many other factors at play here. Net business population growth as well as business churn has also improved and the other indicators are remain stable over the period of five years. The next pillar of the scorecard is productivity. Whenever we speak about productivity, it, also go, it often goes hand in hand with competitiveness. Richard mentioned previously about Krugman's definition of competitiveness and again, productivity was key here. Um, it's the weakest element of the scorecard, unfortunately, and when the, whenever we speak about productivity, it, we often ask the question, are we relatively unproductive because of what we do, or is it how we do it? In Northern Ireland's case, it's actually both. So we have a relatively high concentration of workers in sectors which are generally seen as not very productive, but also the type of activities that we do in the relatively productive sectors they're not productive. So if you look at the likes of the finance sector, London will be involved in highly productive activities such as hedge funding, whereas in Northern Ireland, a lot of our activities will be the likes of retail banking. So that's one of the key reasons why we don't perform so well on the productivity pillar. A good point to note, however, is that over the past five years, the sectoral productivity growth rate uh, has is growing faster than the UK rate, but again, this has come from a small base. Prices and costs. Prices and costs, again, it's a bit of, it's a story of two halves. Uh, we're relatively competitive in terms of property costs, so our office space is amongst the lowest within, within the world in the comparative countries, and our house prices are quite low, as well as manufacturing wages. On the other hand, so electricity prices as well as growth in labour costs have made us less competitive in, in this area. One of the important things to take away from here though is whether your Northern Ireland is seen to be perceived as competitive. Well, it depends on a business's cost base. If the business's cost base is made up of labour and is made up of labour and property, then we will be seen as quite competitive. However, if the cost base is dependent upon uh, transport and energy costs, we won't be perceived as being overly competitive. And this again is just a bit more detail as to what's improved, what hasn't improved. There's quite a lot of red in there, so it's basically a trade-off as you do experience economic growth and become more, more competitive than prices and costs will increase. Um, one of the reasons that has drove up the, uh, our performance in this pillar is the house price to earnings ratio, as you can see. It's improved by eight decile positions over the period of five years. Another important pillar is the employment and labour supply. We're relatively weak and deteriorating. So we've, went, we've moved from 6.8 to 7.3. Key issues here are high rates of youth unemployment, long-term youth unemployment, as well as high rates of people who are not in education or training, also known as needs. 
whilst we are improving in some areas, this isn't improving as fast as, as other, other comparator countries. Um, one of the key things here also is we also have a high level of benefit dependency. A risk that this is to our economy is if we continue to have high levels of long-term unemployment, high levels of youth unemployment, these individuals will continue, will be removed further from the labour market, which essentially in turn will increase again the high level of benefit dependency that we have. In a bit more detail there, you can see the youth long-term youth unemployment rate has actually fallen by three decile positions over the past five years. Business environment is actually our strongest performing element of the scorecard, as Richard mentioned previously. We perform particularly well in the indicators that are set within a UK framework, so the likes of regulation of professional services, ease of doing business and product market regulation, they're all set within the UK framework and Northern Ireland benefits from operating within that same business environment. We also perform well in some indicators with regards to access to finance, so when compared with other UK regions, we actually have the highest amount of approval rate for business loans and the value of these loans are actually quite high as well relative to the UK. On the other hand, however, other sources of finance such as private equity, number of merger and acquisition deals and venture capital, we don't perform too well in these areas. And this raises the question, is it a demand issue, is it a supply issue or is it an issue at all? If businesses are receiving finance, whether it be through banks or the likes of Invest NI, does it matter that they aren't receiving the finance through the likes of private equity or venture capital? Physical infrastructure, it's another pillar of the scorecard where we perform quite well. Um, reasons, uh, it's improved over the past five years from 6.3 to 5.9. Our technical, technological infrastructure is extremely good over in Northern Ireland and the likes of productivity, broadband connectivity, access and services. Super fast broadband availability where we perform extremely well. Whereas in other areas, uh, the likes of traffic congestion and the number of air routes available, we don't perform so well. It's actually interesting to note that for the traffic congestion, we're ranked as the worst city within the UK for traffic congestion. And this looks at the difference in travel time between peak times and off-peak times. And I know myself driving down the West Link at 6 p.m. in comparison to 12, 12 at night, there's a huge difference. So that's where that indicator comes from. Another issue there, the number of air routes. We'll have to put this into context, even though we NI reports directly may not be competitive with the direct number of air routes that they have. We're only an hour down the road from Dublin and we've got good connectivity to the likes of London and, and other hubs. Our energy import dependency also, we don't perform so well and this would be hard to change given Northern Ireland's resource endowments. But one significant improvement here is, as Richard mentioned previously, in the environmental pillar of the scorecard, the move towards using renewable energies as a source of energy generation. So that's one positive to take away from the, our dependence on energy imports, because in the short term, there's not much we can do. Education and skills, it's one of our strongest pillars. Uh, it has, our performance has fallen over the past five years, but if you, this chart table in particular is important as around 50% of the indicators are actually improving. So whilst we're improving, we're just not improving as fast as other countries. So you'll see even though there's a lot of green, there's a lot of red downward arrows in the change in deciles. So we are, we're doing well, we're getting better, but just other countries seem to be performing getting better quick, more quickly than what we are. Innovation, research and development. Ignore that top point. It's not one of our strongest, stronger pillars. We perform at about two thirds. Two thirds in comparison to the, the other countries about have a performance here of about six. So we're, we're performing quite well in terms of research grants and the number of researchers that we have and PhD graduates 
we have quite a lot of those. One particular point here is actually how the areas that we're improving in. We've Richard Johnson yesterday launched the, knowledge, the newest Knowledge Economy report. Um, over the past five years, we're get, getting better in that aspect. Our Knowledge Economy is growing. We're also having a, lot, a higher percentage of firms that are engaged in innovative activity, both in the industry and the service side. Areas that we're not doing so well in are the actual the total amount of expenditure on research and development and that is we were doing quite well in that over the past five years but the figures the bird figures out in 2014 fell by about 100 million so impacted the the our result in this score part the patent applications within northern ireland as well we don't perform too well in terms of rankings but this seems to be improving and hopefully it continues to improve okay so thank you everyone i'll pass you back to richard Okay, so this is where it actually gets most interesting in terms of the policy conversations. So as you've seen, there's about 150 indicators there. And then what we need to do is draw them together to find out what's most relevant and what needs to happen in Northern Ireland. So happiness and well-being, it's not just about GDP, not just about money. It's about family linkages, community bonds and, and a peaceful society. So, you know, bringing well-being, bringing quality of life more into the programme for government is actually a very positive thing to do. Productivity, we thought that because it was the weakest pillar that we should do a bit more work. So we've actually completed a, a productivity paper for EIG that's now been published as well. And it finds that it's the most important uh, contributory factor to the income gap. So if you want to make Northern Ireland a more wealthy society, increasing productivity is the most important thing that we could do. But to close the productivity gap even to 90%, we're at 80% of the UK level, we would need to create 75,000 jobs at £75,000 productivity. So an average wage of about £45,000 plus £35,000. Education and skills, even though we laud that as one of the key successes in Northern Ireland, the fact that we are doing well and we're growing is, is fantastic. But the fact that other countries are actually stepping ahead in Northern Ireland is, is very worrying. So stopping the relative decline in the international context. In terms of energy, we do have relatively high energy prices and a dependence on imported fuels. And that actually, because of the exchange rate movement recently, will become more important. R&D and I, boosting Govard and reversing recent declines in, declines in Baird. And actually the figures published this week um, show that R&D R &D has increased again. So actually business expenditure in R&D went up by 24% this year. Um, and that's really due to probably the impact of, say, two or three of the ten largest companies in Northern Ireland. So infrastructure. Dealing with con congestion, so you know a good investment in road infrastructure, linking up the main motorways, a very strong technological infrastructure, especially for IT companies, is very important. Costs, so we're very we're very good in terms of water rates, and we're very good in terms of rents, and we're quite cheap in terms of labour and stuff like that. But you know, it's making sure that Northern Ireland remains competitive in those areas. Welfare and worklessness is a problem with economic inactivity and unemployment and especially youth long-term unemployment, which is a concern. And we do have a significant reliance on benefits and those are really skills issues. So investing in the skills of people, if they have level three or level four qualifications, they're much less likely to be unemployed. And that's really the roundup of our presentation. So I think we're now on to Q&A.